Helping patients to breathe is crucial to many medical challenges and treatments. Our team from St. Luke's Health System shows us how a career in respiratory therapy uses modern technology and can provide a calm and reassuring presence amidst worry and distress. Welcome to St. Luke's, a health system with multiple hospitals and campuses and hundreds of primary care and specialty clinics. Today, we're going to take you behind the scenes to show you a unique healthcare career, and you'll even get to meet a member of our St. Luke's healthcare team. Do you know how many people it takes to run a health system like St. Luke's? Impressive, isn't it? And it's not just doctors and nurses, from lab technicians to surgical support, housekeeping, security, and many others that are rewarding opportunities for everyone. And now we'll introduce you to a key member of the healthcare team, a respiratory therapist. But what does a respiratory therapist actually do? Hey, Dan. Hey, Tasha, how are you today? Good, come on in and welcome to respiratory. You guys do such important work here. What is your role in the health system? Tell me a little bit more about it. Well, as a respiratory therapist, we're responsible for breathing. We see patients that have a hard time, from older patients to infants. And what made you choose this line of work in healthcare? I did a little research on you know, other medical areas to go into, and I found that respiratory sound pretty interesting. Like, how cool is that, that you get to help people breathe? So I decided to go into respiratory. I have an intubated patient here, and the tube is actually put in so that we can help this patient breathe. So what I do in the beginning is I'm gonna go ahead and attach this Ambu bag here to the tube, and I'm gonna give this thing a little squeeze here, and you're gonna see those lungs actually inflate. So, see how that's happening? That is just awesome. Like, something you can't see while you're doing it, but this just demonstrates how right. it's done. And there's another piece of equipment here that you use too. Show me that yeah, as well. Yeah, sure. So, what I have here is called a bronchoscope. This is something that sometimes we may have to take a look down the tube and see what's going on down there. So I'm gonna just go ahead and feed that down. You can see that going down My goodness. the tube here. Yeah. So we go all the way down here, that tube. So we have our lungs where they separate and we're able to get a look. And if there's anything down there that needs to be cleaned out, we have suction on here. We're actually able to push this button and suction all that stuff out of there. Any yes. healthcare career requires a lot of education. What education did you go through? What was your journey there to get to where you are today? Okay, well, um, you can do it two ways. One way, you can go for an associate's degree in respiratory therapy, or you can actually go for a bachelor's degree in respiratory therapy. And what opportunities are there to advance as a respiratory therapist from the ground up and, and rising up the ranks? Pretty much, we have different levels, a lot of advancement opportunities here. So I started as a respiratory therapist level one. I have now moved up to a respiratory therapist level three. Great. So um, yeah, so it goes all the way up to a four. I also like to mention that I did a bachelor's degree program here that was 100% paid for. That's wonderful. By St. Luke's. Tasha, I know there's other equipment in here that you want to show us. So I see over here we have an actual ventilator. Yes. So show me how this works for a patient that needs it. Okay, so basically, um, same thing. We have our intubated patient here, but the difference is this is actually attached to a ventilator. So I have the ventilator running here, and you can actually see that the machine is actually breathing for this patient. You see the lungs inflate, and it all happens through this machine here. It's just awesome. Yeah, and it's an, it's an actual life-saving machine that it does is. breathing for a patient yes. who needs it. Yes. That's amazing. You are literally doing life-saving work. Yes. Why is that so meaningful to you? You chose this career, and you're doing it every day. What's it, what makes it meaningful for you? It just makes me feel something in my heart, something special, just knowing that I am able to breathe for someone and see them walk out the door at the same time. They come in at their worst and then sometimes they leave at their best. And just to know that I had something to do with that, it just basically does something for me. That's really terrific. 
Tasha, you also have lung examples, actual yes. lung examples. Actual. And I want you to show these to us and the difference between a healthy set of lungs and a not so healthy set of right. lungs. Right, so actually these are lungs from a pig, Okay. but it gives you an idea on what the lungs look like here. So I have a healthy lung here, and then I have an unhealthy lung here from an individual that may have smoked one pack a day for 20 years. So I'm able to inflate these lungs here by just pressing on this here, and you can actually see the breathing. You can see the actual difference. Yes, you can. In how they inflate. Exactly. This set is clearly struggling more yes. than the other. Yes, and so you can see here, it's just not healthy. I mean, you can tell just looking at it compared to this, this is what smoking does to you. Yeah. Tasha, this has been terrific. It was yeah. great to talk to you. And the sense that I'm getting is that you have a lung career yes. ahead of you. Thank you so much for visiting St. Luke's today. Kansas City is such an exciting place to work and live. And we're really lucky to care for such a great community. We hope that you'll one day consider the healthcare profession, maybe even at St. Luke's. There's no better place and right here. This is St. Luke's, a healthcare system made up of diverse and dedicated professionals who unite for one vision. To provide the best care to our patients and communities, we position our team to achieve excellence. This is where we save lives, treat people with compassion, and fill hearts with hope. It's here where creativity meets technology, where diversity meets collaboration, where resilience meets community. It's all here at St. Luke's, the intersection of innovation and hope. <clears throat>
And I think each disease process is specific to what type of education they need. And continuing that education when they go home is key to keep them from being readmitted back into the hospital and taking a total rounded approach into their care. Marshall has the next question. And so he asks, what kind of patients do you usually work with on a typical basis if there is such a thing as a typical uh, patient? Well, I would say we do a lot of asthmatic patients. Um, we deal with a lot of COPD patients, mainly any patient that is having any issues with breathing. So it could be anyone. It could be a stroke, heart attack. It doesn't really have to be a certain type of patient, but um, anything that has to do with any breathing related issues, then we will see those patients. And so I'm sure you saw a lot, and I'm glad somebody asked this question. So Devin put in the chat, um, so obviously COVID happened. So Devin asks, was it hard working during the pandemic? And I guess adding on to that point, I mean, what's, how is it now, you know, as you've compared in these last few years and maybe your experiences, you know, through the COVID pandemic? Um, it was very hard working through the pandemic. I would say it's probably one of the hardest things I've ever had to do in my career. Um, it was just a lot. We didn't really know what was going on, how to treat COVID. Um, and so we were learning as we were treating um, our patients. And so there was a lot to see. Um, you just really had to be strong. Um, at that time, there were a lot of people that didn't feel like they could do um, health care at that time, but um, a lot of us did survive it, and <laughs> um, right now, COVID is, we know more about it now, so it's under control here, at least, it's under control, and we know how to treat it. We're not really scared anymore <laughs> like we were before. So um, I would say it's gotten a lot better. I think from a leadership perspective, I would just say right now we're dealing with the aftermath of um, making sure that our staff feel and continue to be supported. And, um, you know, there's probably in all healthcare realms a little bit of PTSD associated with what we went through with COVID. And so um, every day it's checking in with your staff and your staff checking in with you and, and just making sure that your verbal and your voice is heard um, because we, we were all here together. And so that, that's been one of the, the key factors in keeping us going in the department. Yeah, I'm sure that's a great point. So, um, so Kaylee asked, so in the video you mentioned of there, you could get a two-year degree or a four-year degree in respiratory therapy, so she asks, is there a difference in terms of the work you're able to do or, I guess, a, a track you should be on one way or another if you want to go in respiratory therapy or does it matter? Yeah, so um, just like nursing, we have associates, bachelor's, master's degrees for respiratory therapists. As soon as an associate's degree, you can sit for your boards, just like nursing, um, and you can come out and hold the same credentials as a either certified or registered respiratory therapist. There's no difference in the work that you can do, whether you have an associate's or a bachelor's degree. Um, most people that pursue the bachelor's degree or even um, master's degree, they're looking at their future and what it looks like down the road when they gradually wean themselves away from bedside. And so um, it, it's obviously preferable that you do that, but you hold the same credentials once you're licensed either way. And I have one last question, Shireen, from a student here. So um, Grace just asked once again, what is some advice you might give to somebody, you know, as they're looking at, you know, she specifically asked, you know, comparing different types of healthcare professions. Um, so maybe what's some advice you would give for somebody you know, that is looking at that, but also specifically for respiratory therapy? I would say to, I would actually try to put myself out there and maybe shadow someone, maybe go into the hospital and just kind of follow a respiratory therapist or any healthcare profession, um, just so you can get an idea of what is actually done. And sometimes it might take just more than once, but um, just do your research 
on each area and also, you know, don't hesitate to reach out and follow any healthcare professional that you are think, thinking about going into that field. And I'll just add on to that by saying that respiratory therapy is more of a specialized field. We do a lot of focus on the lungs and the heart, um, whereas nursing does a, a broad scope on, you know, kind of the bigger picture. And so if you're someone who wants to have a specialty or a focus, respiratory therapy would be great. Um, we do attend every code blue rapid response. We're in all critical situations in the hospital, and we help manage with the provider's life support. And so um, it's it's unique, and it is something, yes, that you should probably shadow someone to make sure that, that you um, are comfortable with the role before you spend your time in school for it. A few more questions for you. Um, yeah. How do you stay up to date on new treatments or technologies in your field? Um, you know, we are required, just like nurses, I'll, I'll put that out there, to have so many CEUs a year, and it's based by our state and who we're licensed through. Um, so we are required to keep up with a certain amount of CEUs, but also our health system is great at promoting education and new classes and therapies. Um, we work hand in hand with our medical director, who um, we are continuously getting new therapies and um, COVID helped a lot with that. So, you know, every day we came in, there was something new and a new therapy that we were learning. So, um, and also our new students that come into our department, um, whereas I've been in the field for about 20 years, they're coming in with the newest therapy. So it's about listening to them and um, kind of picking their brain too. They, they are the newest in school, out of school. And so they have a great deal of knowledge. And a CEU is a continuing education unit. Yep. Mm -hmm. And how many do you have? Are you required uh, to to do a year? Twelve. 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 Six of those have to be in person somewhere, but a total of of twelve. And then we also have hospital system requirements as far as education on other things that are more broad spectrum to healthcare. Well, thank you both for sharing uh, your insight on a career working as a re uh, respiratory therapist. And we appreciate the time that you spent with us this morning. Thank, thank you. you.